as we've, he's got all these tack, all his kit, got about two poles set up, two rigs on the pole, and two rods set up, and they've drawn next to him, he said, well, I'm going to have a good match tonight. Now he said, he can beat me tonight. He's <laughs> real keen up. So I've just got the match to count, and then I did fetch it. I set up a small peacock to get down a bit if they're not up in the water. And I think I had seven pound that night and finished second. He packed up in a two and a half hour match. I said, you, how can you pack up in two and a half hours match? You can't wait to sit here and beat me. I said, do you want me to pack up? <laughs> and he packed up, gone. And Ivan says to me, he said, he's been waiting for ages to sit next to you. But he's happy, but he can't believe how you beat him. <laughs> He'd never seen that method, which is just the match now. Yeah. You ever fished it, Mark? Yeah. And I've fished little tiny pole flakes, but ever so tiny, you know, and mm. I got to twig them. And how have you gone on with the match? Have you had big weights, wins? Yeah. Sexual Not wins. big weights, but a little weights. So. In, when we went to Ireland, you know that photo, of the dark photo, three-day competition, might have been the Irish Tourist Board or a ferry sponsored it. And they sponsored it. If you get over 100 kilos in the three days they'll give you the two or three hundred pound more so anyway me and Ivan I'd drawn the same section as him all oh, some long walks there after his art so I had to take all his kit backwards and forwards so we you have four days fishing throw away your lowest weight keep the other three and he ended up going into the map last match Ivan was in front I was second or third Steve Warner were fourth or fifth and we drawn a decent section and looks at this bit Ivan there was a bit of a inlet or setback a bit like a cow drink with one Ivan's two pegs down there and I'm one peg up here one in between us sets up it's walked by Ivan's pegs it's all bubbles coming up pin bubbles as big as that table mark cover that table <sighs> can't wait to fish goes to mine and there's none but there's all little fish about lots of them so I'm go I've got to try the matchstick I've got to no, down plenty of lead down worm in a caster put some stuff they'll come to you if they're not there now so I said okay that would be my thing but I'm still having a go at this 35 kilo at mark <laughs> in five hours <laughs> and when my matchstick sometimes it'd be three foot deep but the real way to catch them bit better small fish go up another two foot depending on the depth of the water 50 percent that up again so when you go in the first thing you do is look at the maggot and that will go out of natural sight once that's out of now at any time that goes black you just go like that and that's the time they're in the net they don't know the it always related a bit to trev but then again your industry is the same so you must think in the same logic way up the river saw gone hard for fishing at winter league I've never won a winter league been fishing them since i was 15 16 mark so when you're in the session we're in the section with nottingham and leicester and loughborough so it goes to the trent one day i think it's i forget above gunthorpe i forget the venue shelton shelford so anyhow it draws at the end of a road the river's coming up but he ends up put a few pounds together i mean my five six seven pound of fish then it was dead, so I've slung just a straight lead out, and I asked for something off the guy next peg to me. It must have been something I asked for. He said, "Yeah, I got one. Use this." As I've walked back, <laughs> rod round up, and it was again a big road to about a pound. Netted it. There's only two and a half hours gone on the river. Didn't get another bite. River must have come up in where I was. A good. I'm pulling my stuff back, Mark. So going back to the Trev Tomlin thing, the next week we'd been up the saw and been catching double figures of gudgeon. Right under your pole, six, seven, eight foot deep. You're fishing two swan float. Yeah, straight down it. Yeah. But what he does before that, you know, he said you, you cut the weeds off. What they used to do, they used to have a rake. Yeah. On extender, feed it out, drop it off so it goes in, <sighs> churns it all up, churns yeah, it all up. Want it, yeah. You get to your peg early, it's just settled and you've, you've cleaned the weeds, you've lifted blood worms, snails or anything that's there and then put your stuff in, you've got a clean bait. So I'd won that one the week before, then I'd drawn this at right long walk, Mark, two bloody fields. And I think about three pegs from the end, and I didn't fancy the area, put in, raked it out, and there were bubbles there before I'd even started fishing. 
just some pinheads so I thought this wouldn't be good so I thought I've still got it I don't know whether we could use Joker at that time might have been able to boom two balls in all day mark 11 pound all little gudgeon freezing cold it lovely days fishing hardly a fish either side of it <laughs> and like you, you've was, done the same to them. I was well popular that second week you should have seen their faces how the hell did you do that I said I fished by peg Mm, yeah. That's all I did. I did nothing that, more. You told me I had the worst peg in the drawer, and I did. So I started with the, the, only, the catch a little attitude and see where it takes you. I've ever won off a bed bad peg. Mm. I won a lot of matches, but the only one you can say that was a bad right. peg. It wasn't the best peg. By the time you get way. that mop, when you go and sit down at a peg, putting your kit down and getting settled is a very. You've got to be delicate because they. Feel so at the weekend, I, th I think I was fishing or watching, I'm not sure. So Mickey Thill and some lovely fine anger, angler, lovely guy, kidnapped me, I call him. He said, Ivan, Phil, come with us, we'll see you later. So I get in the Dormerville. Remember driving around London, never been around London, with the Dormerville open. No safety belts. This big poor, big afro. And Mickey Thill, he looked long, dark hair, right cool cat. And I got my fishing kit in. And when we got to his mum's house, dead basic it was, Paul. Dead basic it was, Mark. Really basic house. A bit like Ivan's, but even more meagre, but nice feeling. Cold. So anyway, I ends up staying there at night. Linda's worried about him. Mickey's that good looking. Is he gay? Is Paul gay? We shouldn't let Phil, is it? We're only looking after him. It's not our child. So uh, we got the kit out and he made a couple of floats the same, Mick, and then put them back. And he said, which one Ivan made? I said, that one. He says, so he got it out. Him and his mate Paul went in the other room, did him the float yeah. back at the end. And uh, then he just, I just, it was just crazy. Then Ivan done well in the match. And on the Sunday, Mickey says, oh, come for a drink on the way back. And it felt like it was somewhere near Windsor because we'd been raised by near the airport. It's ran that way, isn't it? I did that very well. So we go into know. this old looking pub again. I'm only, again, I don't drink, Mark. So we go in there and there's um, dancing and in there are transvestites. <laughs> I'd never seen dressed up women, never mind dressed up men as women. And then next to us, and then Ivan was introduced to this man here, and it was the big man out of, um... John Peel, not John Peel, Peel, Emma Tom, Pussy Galore, what's the, what's the no, thing? John know, Steed, really. John Steed. What yeah. was that for? What was this series called? Not Avengers. Avengers. Yeah, sure, something like that. Yeah. Well, the Avengers big man that gave Steed his instructions. A bit like the James Bond relationship. He had a master, which was a big guy, oh, right, yeah. dark hair. You could recognise, and he's the one that Steed would go through to get given the assignments. Yeah. And he was sitting in the pub there, and he, he had a lovely hour or so, and make it there. And all of a sudden, it's all do you want to drink, Phil? Because I didn't drink, but Mark. So I said, oh, I'll have a brandy and pep or something. Two drinks later, I'm on the gutter in my underpants, it full of sick all round. <laughs> so uh, Ivan Linda's come out, oh, what we don't put him in the car quick, put a blanket at him. And then I went to sleep. Next thing you know, my eyes in the car, woke up and I seen toilets. And we're at, we're at Watford Gap service station, Ivan's pouring petrol in and I just see toilets. So I get out of the car. <laughs> And realise I ain't got no clothes on. Linda said, Oh, we could just take him home, take him down to your mum's. You can't take him back to his mum. Oh, you would have.